good morning to all so today is a great day we have two stalwarts in agricultural extension uh, one is going to deliver the guest lecture, guest lecture today and uh, we are really blessed to have uh, these two stalwarts from agricultural extension uh, so today is going to be a great day and uh, we have dr reshmi singh a uh, principal scientist agricultural extension from indian agriculture research institute so i take this opportunity to wholeheartedly welcome our uh, guest speaker of this day dr reshmi singh uh, to say a few words <laughs> few words about the guest speaker uh, she is working as a principal scientist she was also a head of that division for some time and she is specialized in entrepreneurship development and motivation uh, gender and the sociological issues in agricultural extension and uh, she had uh, her education from merit university for doing msc and uh, phd from dr b r ambedkar university agra uttar pradesh and she has guided 16 msc and the 15 phd students and, and uh, she has developed many methodologies technologies and system in extension that noted notably we can say that uh, process model of agripreneurship development system of institutional convergence of synergistic strengths for women entrepreneurship development trainers and teaching manuals for entrepreneurship development then entrepreneurial technical information packages for potential agripreneurs she has also delineated the factors for successful entrepreneurship so uh, she is really having very good expertise in entrepreneurship and today she is going to share her uh, experiences in developing entrepreneurship that to from iri experiences so and she has been recognized uh, uh, widely at the national level with so many awards uh, to notably i am just uh, telling few uh, international she won the international expert on women entrepreneurship by asian productivity organization japan then she backed this professor ramnath singh puraskar for technical book writing in hindi by icr then professor yp singh memorial award by indian society of extension education fellow award of the indian society then fellow award of the society of community mobilization and sustainable development new delhi so again uh, i should be very much thankful to madam because you know all very well that uh, uh, this uh, big jump the cyclone is threatening and we were really afraid whether we will be having our madam today because uh, uh, it is a threatening throughout uh, india chennai and uh, parts of this country so but you know madam has made it uh, made her presence today and uh, really we are all blessed to have him have her as our guest speaker and with these few words i welcome our madam dr rashmi singh thank you madam and uh, today we have another uh, uh, special guest uh, dr vijay raghun sir you know he is uh, alumni of uh, both iri and ftnau and he had a, he excelled in uh, his uh, uh, icr jrf and srf examinations and he got a seat at iri and he did his both msc and phd from iri and a very extraordinary professor and very creative professor also and the inspiring professor we can say he is a teacher inspiring teacher and he used to handle each and every class with the utmost sincerity and the creativity uh, so every class is remembered still and we are all benefited during our student days and i am a student of uh, dr vijayaram sir and uh, he was also professor and head of this division uh, this uh, department of agricultural extension uh, then he was also Uh, director uh, publications and uh, public relations he has excellent human relationship and uh, once if you just attend to him you can never forget uh, very green memories he will impose so so nice of him uh, he has a very good human relations also and uh, he is uh, also very busy uh, with the road tractor club and uh, busy in the city uh, joining with all literary clubs and because he has extraordinary oratory skills in both english as well as in tamil language 
So he uh, has an excellent uh, talk also. In public also, he is coming up and uh, we could see many of his programs in WhatsApp. And uh, he had a, also motivated our vice chancellor that uh, because you are now inviting all experts from throughout the country, it is really a good thing for the Tamil Nadu Agriculture University. And this is going to uh, be a boost for the, uh, many experts to join TNAU for their uh, speak, uh, guest speech and all. So with these few words, uh, I have requested our professor, Dr. Vijayaram sir, to be the chairman of this uh, guest uh, lecture. So, so after uh, Madam has uh, delivered her uh, speech, and uh, uh, okay, he will also offer his remarks and uh, he will chat this session. As a token of respect, I request uh, Dr. Nirmala Devi to present a shawl and moment to our guest speaker, followed by uh, respected head of the department, Dr. Rati and excellent uh, faculty members, my dear students. Uh, the speaker of the day, Dr. Smasing. I don't know how to address her. I know her for quite long time. Uh, exactly 47 happy years back, I entered IRA as a student. 1976, we topping ICR Junior Fellowship Examination in Agricultural Extension. I entered. Uh, 1976, both for my MSc and PhD program, I was there at IRA for six years. Uh, as soon as uh, I saw that name yesterday, from uh, Dr. Cartier. Uh, I think uh, I thought as if I am at IRA. I am at IRA. Uh, quite a few of her programs uh, she organized at IRA. I was a resource person. I was a resource person. And we had a very good time. We had a very good time at IRA. And uh, oh, I think we can meet uh, often and we can talk to many times and this is the day for Dr. S. B. Singh, Dr. S. B. Singh, highly enterprising, a role model for women, a role model vice chancellor is our vice chancellor, a role model extension professional I could say in Dr. S. B. Singh, S. B. Singh. Yesterday after seeing Dr. Kathy Ains letter I wrote a message to vice chancellor uh, thanking him for inviting professionals from long distance IRI. She immediately replied, uh, conveying her best wishes because it starts from extension and then we felt very happy. That's why I make it a point to be here. So as the chairman of the function, I have got uh, two small tasks to be done, two quick small tasks to be done. The very first task is uh, presenting this pen, name inscribed as Dr. S. Me Singh to the speaker of the day. The second task is a request to the speaker of the day, Dr. Smithing, uh, to welcome our professors with us all, both MSc and PhD. One by one, you can come and uh, she will, you will be adorned with us all by our uh, Dr. Smithing. Please come. Good morning. I am I'm really speechless right now. I don't know how I will be <laughs> presenting whatever slides I have prepared. Every time you meet Dr. R. Vijay Raghavan sir, uh, you are surprised and you learn so many things. How to treat your students, how to treat other people, individuals, farmers. So it's a great learning sir every time I meet you. And it's a, it's a sir, like I... Uh, uh, realize that there is so much to learn from you uh, in the way how you treat people, how you manage things, and how you, uh, and academics has been always your forte, which we already know. So I am really humbled and thankful to you. Uh, uh, Honorable Dr. Vijay Raghavan sir, uh, former Director Extension, TNAU. Uh, Dr. Kartikeyan sir, head. Uh, Department of Extension, TNAU, uh, Dr. Nirmala, Nirmala uh, Professor, uh, 
uh, other senior faculty members and dear students the second year students as well as the freshers it's always uh, uh, good to be the in between like uh, you interact with your elders seniors you learn from them and uh, like i consider that my position is very well situated among the senior members here and with the young blood uh, uh, working and interacting with youngsters keeps you alive and energized so i feel blessed to be part of you here uh, presenting the activities which we have engaged in and talking about agropreneurship uh, farm entrepreneurship which is very dear to my heart and i may not uh, you know share the kind of passion which dr vijay raghavan and our seniors had had but this topic is very dear to me and i have been working in this area for the last 27 28 years so uh, like and building on project by project so at least 10 projects we have completed at iri on entrepreneurship this is for the initiative and majorly like uh, most of the projects have been like uh, i have been the pi uh, apart from my senior lead dr rita jamkani and dr dio prav who was already part of our projects there so i'll just go ahead with my presentations and if anything any query any comment i would be like happy to interact with you on that so whenever we see a uh, rural uh, scenario like it exists as a very bleak scenario when we go like you people must have also experienced when you have gone for your rave program or any rural interaction there are like when we talk about the what are the problems you are doing focus group discussions or you are doing some pr exercise and you want to discuss what are the local problems you want to identify along with them the farmers will be coming up you know bizarre problems like ranging from like non availability of the electricity or the social problems like corruption so it if the debate can go on you have to steer them along to the specific agenda for which you have gone so this is the extension you know dilemma which we always already uh, see so considering that this dark and gray and black scenario in our rural areas what is the like uh, uh, what can be done to transform our agriculture sector the thought was like uh, uh, like we are producing we are a very number one in some of the commodities and like uh, second and uh, various other commodities so production level we have like say sufficient stocks are also maintained actually we are now talking more on the post harvest losses and the losses which are occurring in the storage go downs so what to do about it so uh, it's not to say that production is limited but nevertheless agriculture is non remunerative considering the kind of returns which are uh, like accrued by the farmer from farmer's perspective it is still a very bleak uh, area but then uh, seeing the production figures you see that they, we are like leading so what can be done to revitalize agriculture is the uh, like inculcation of entrepreneurial competencies and in entrepreneurial spirit among our farmers where because whenever we talk about entrepreneurship i i take it from my example only i wanted to pursue a agricultural entrepreneurship uh, during my phd so uh, i got admission uh, like they cleared the entrance examination of jnu prestigious uh, uh, university there for phd uh, uh, pursuing phd then they had the whole department and i had to present the my synopsis over there and because i have selected the topic of coven entrepreneurship i was not aware of the kind of you know forces were happening uh, like going behind the scenes but i was very much you know for the topic i want i had already delineated this topic i wanted to do it the uh, you might be knowing professor yp singh uh, was great sociologist he was chairing that session and other stalwarts were there i, I don't know many of them and they interview why do you want to do this and uh, uh, i did not clear that interview because that was only one seat and there was another one internal candidate who has already done masters over there so what i 
gained uh, from that experience was that i am talking about entrepreneurship in an university which is having a socialist leaning so agriculture per se was thought to be a social in nature like the food access for all uh, beneficiaries uh, the concept of beneficiaries the concept of you know farmers as laid back and where, where you are talking about entrepreneurship which is considered to be of capitalistic origin origin capitalistic like profit making so what what profit making has to do with farmers and i am talking of 1995 when this was like the still going on nowadays we are talking about entrepreneurship the air, the uh, like years which have passed and now the focus everywhere we are talking about entrepreneurship we are talking about agricultural entrepreneurship and we are talking about skill inculcation we are talking about uh, students to take up uh, you know startups so that uh, wave has come and it has it is now full blown now but when i was uh, trying to you know make cracks in the wall there i did not get through jnu experience so but later on i finished my phd on women entrepreneurship only from uh, agra university and that uh, like uh, that because of that work i gained the recognition by apo also asian productivity organization which uh, truly satisfies me but the thing is that it was delayed uh, otherwise i would have done in 1995 only or 97 but it got delayed 2000 i could complete uh nevertheless uh, it, it is to talk about entrepreneurship in an, like when we were talking initially about agricultural entrepreneurship it was not viewed very seriously but today it is uh, considered to be the panacea for changing or transforming agriculture agriculture sector if it has if, if it has become non remunerative it has to be made profitable for farmers so that is the concept with which we went ahead with the projects there We were, we are considering the production level. We we focus more on secondary agriculture, value addition, processing, and grading at farmers level. That would be the uh, you know uh, thing which should be taken up, and that is where where the major budgetary allocation is also being done by the present government since 2014. Uh, we we did this survey among our project villages in NCR Delhi. So, like many people didn't know what secondary agriculture means. Like, uh, but then few farmers were aware, and then as per the data, we thought that uh, like what is the reason why they are like going for secondary agriculture? The major factor was like was that uh, demand was there. The huge uh, paucity in available supply and demand uh, kind of you know, thing dynamics was uh, playing for the uh, farmers favoring the. Uh, like for going for secondary agriculture apart from that uh, like uh, certain distress sale regarding usual commodities marketed and marketable surplus availability these were these came up as a major uh, reasons for farmers to take up secondary agriculture i am going to uh, uh, to highlight some of the cases of uh, innovators who whom we studied as part of our research study to delineate like what are the factors like in the same situation same black scenario in the rural areas which farmers perceive that there are so many constraints so many problems there are farmers who are big, like earning 7 lakhs 10 lakhs per month from their uh, land so what is happening why they are successful and other farmers are not successful? so with this post research question in our mind we studied certain successful cases also in the same area ki what beat their success possible so this is a case of value addition of indian uh, like bura jams it's a well known brand in northern region i am not aware whether it is available here but it is as per the true recipe the british recipe of uh, making jams so linet mushran is a british uh, british lady married to an indian gentleman uh, civil servant and they purchased a land uh, for vacation purposes in bura village near rajgarh in himachal pradesh so for two or three summer months uh, of delhi they escaped to himachal for vacation purposes and uh, like seeing the abundant fruits there she was making she had a hobby of you know preparing uh, like uh, preparing these uh, jams so she will prepare these jam while coming back she will distribute among their family and friends and their next time 
for the there will be like slowly and slowly demand started coming ki next time when are you going to bura so please bring me 10 bottles of this 10 bottles of this so slowly and slowly she realized that there is a gap and there is a business opportunity and uh, what was the condition of bura village before she took up this as an enterprise bura village was like mostly men had migrated to delhi and near other cities in search of jobs women and women led uh, families were like uh, majorly there and just surviving on the like available you know whatever fruits were there so but there was lack of any processing unit over there so lot of uh, fruit was transported to chandigarh and delhi markets but uh, a major portion was going to dams only so uh, when she uh, she realized that this this will help women also she mobilized them and created a uh, company uh, named after the village only bura jam and she employed a uh, full time nine women there and on seasonal basis all the women on the bura village were involved in these activities and she established her brand which is globally known and uh, local from the locally available abundant fruits it was created so this kind of experiment uh, like created jobs for many women there they the uh, like uh, economic condition of women uh, was uh, the village was changed uh, uh, and you can see that it is a women led women enterprise which created definitely a different brand and earlier when i met her in 2000 like uh, she was in uh, she has already established one unit and she was uh, setting up second factory in bura uh, near in rajgarh only and she was into marketing like she employed a mba person for marketing it and uh, different jams you can see different like black cherry apricot strawberry different uh, like type of jams were there and they were not any addition of sucrose was there fructose based only natural uh, fruits can be seen the competitor was kisan jam kisan jam is not a jam it is spread because you can't uh, see any fruity you only see fruity flavor there but you don't find any fruits there chunks of fruits are not there but bura jams their chunks of fruits are there and at that time in 2000 you could find only some of the elite bag, bag, like uh, market markets in delhi where you will find pura jams bottles there and defense colony or ina she uh, like what were her best practices if we listed down for every uh, uh, like such successful cases we listed down best practices what were the facilitative factors in their entrepreneurial journey so best practice like she recognized the opportunity and and then she capitalized on her own strength so these are the lessons which can be learned from uh, by other farmers to develop this kind of you know uh, uh, enterprise farm based enterprise uh, involving large number of local women for women led women who operated enterprise then hygienic and strict adherence to quality standards and make manufacturing was done not not like in a assembly line manner which kisan factory is uh, like uh, uh, here it was in uh, you can see the processes like small quantities handmade and locally produced by local women so that was taken up so it uh, the slow process of manufacturing also retains the uh, original flavor of the uh, recipe, uh, fruits and can, uh, retains the fruity uh, chunks also and preserves that without any addition of preservative so if we learn what can the other entrepreneurs can learn like like utilizing the available resources whatever the resources are there to convert it into a productive venture there is a famous english saying na if you got lemons please prepare lemonade <laughs> so but then not many of uh, they have uh, us apply it in our everyday life creating an enterprise with local goods local people for global market she marketed it among the elite class because she uh, realized that uh, uh, people will not be able to differentiate between chemical she has to create a niche market for her brand and that she knew that people who are discerning nris or uh, uh, foreigners who are uh, frequenting the markets uh, 
पोस्ट मार्केट्स इन डेली एरिया लाइक आई एन ए और डिफेंस कॉलोनी मार्केट और द स्टोर लाइक गुड अर्थ और फैब इंडिया मार्केटेड हर ब्रांड देयर ओनली वेर शी वॉज एबल टू अप्रोच दो पीपल हु विल बी लाइक रियलाइजिंग द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ हेर प्रोडक्ट so and then she created a network of at various level production level also the finance level the marketing agencies and the transporters she uh, then she is also exporting so now if you search on internet google search mein agar aap bureau jams if you click on it it will be like uh, there are many stories which have been done by many agencies many ma- like uh, news news agencies also but when i was interviewing her it was a process which she was going through and there was a dilemma because already she was 65 plus and she asked me like i have uh, done this but who to uh, who will take over this uh, you know giant uh, enterprise which i am building because my children are both settled and they are not interested so they are they, are, they have their own respective job so that was the concern she was having but later on now i see that it is full fledged full fledged enterprise going still going on and uh, you have e marketing also like through their website they are selling so many opportunities are there maybe the uh, like employees are there or maybe the children have uh, like started looking after it i do not uh, know for the last 5 6 years what is happening but through internet i can see that it is still a viable enterprise so <clears throat> secondly this second case i'll take only two cases don't uh, get bored that uh, i'm just uh, going ahead with it <coughs> yeah so this is uh, uh, mr arvind beniwal from uh, palla village near delhi he he has uh, like evolved a innovative production methods and is engaged in retailing them not a single day he is majorly into strawberry cultivation and plus uh, this vegetable cultivation but not a single day goes when he is not harvesting produce from his fields and selling it to the market so the main thing which can be highlighted is not the strawberry cultivation the main thing is to be highlighted here is that not a single day is 365 days 365 days of uh, harvesting and 365 days of selling sale so not every farmer is in, uh, taking land as a resource they are not planning their crops according as per the season as per the uh, like uh, market and he, he has uh, uh, like uh, crystallized this kind of process for his farm and this farm is he has rented it and uh, it is just near to okla uh, this uh, azadpur uh, ma- sabzi mandi which is apmc market nearby which is 5 me- uh, 5 kilometers away from the palla village but he is not originally resident of palla village he is land got the line which is i think 30 or 15 kilometers uh, more uh, in the outskirts of delhi and which was not productive for agriculture purposes purposes so he leased it out that for other purposes and leased it land in palla village for strawberry production when i asked him why strawberry only or that this is what i knew so again the point of that uh, capitalizing one's own strength comes here also that whatever he knew he capitalized on it and crop planning for not a single day is wasted uh for example you see the uh, below the uh, photograph of strawberry cultivation the mulching and the ridge and uh, furrow method of plantation is there and for uh, for saving the crop from uh, uh, frost he is he is using the, the plastic sheets also you see the in the uh, ridges he has planted strawberry but in the furrows he plants in december the uh, taiwanese variety of uh, this uh, watermelon why taiwanese because taiwanese varieties are, are having small fruits which are uh, in demand in market because of the smaller families the indian varieties have huge watermelons which may, may be of uh, you know less uh, not uh, like le- not less than 5 kg and which are not the requirement of families nowadays 
कौन ले जाएगा दे विल बी लाइक चूजिंग सम अदर फ्रूट राधर देन टेकिंग अ ह्यूज वाटरमेलन बिकॉज इफ यू कट यू नीड टू एक्स लाइक कंज्यूम इट इन अ गो सो यू कांट कीप इट इन लाइक अ फ्रिज और समथिंग एंड देन यू कंज्यूम इट लेटर ऑन सो दी ऑल दीस एस्पेक्ट्स आई हैव नॉट टेलिंग आई हैव नॉट रिड्यूसिंग इट्स अ फार्मर हु इज हु हैज रिड्यूस्ड फ्रॉम हिट एंड ट्रायल एंड ही इज हैविंग दैट मार्केट सेविनेस व्हिच वी व्हिच फार्मर्स नीड टू इंबाइब what is in demand uh, in market what is the consumer preference what kind of you know our resources utilization is there no wastage is there not even one waste uh, one day is going when my land is not utilized when i am not selling so he has perfected that crop planning uh, planning calendar for his uh, land and he is not wasting any of his resources so this is a like a kind of thing which we uh, learned from him that uh, market savviness and similarly in uh, as, uh, from rajasthan uh, this farmer has developed a new variety new lemon variety and uh, which is known as sirohi gold and uh, also good uh, quality papaya and also he has uh, uh, like tractor drive, uh, like he, he has developed a tractor driven uh, sprayer for uh, managing his farm which is very uh, which he developed with the help of the local craftsman and he, his ingenuity resulted in this kind of spray and i saw it in sirohi uh, some years back i did this case study and later on uh, 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 after some uh, two or three years i visited hyderabad and i saw that uh, spray was there also so they said yes yes we i said Where you, where have you bought it from? They said that from Sirohi in Rajasthan, somewhere in Rajasthan. Then I said Sirohi. Then he is uh, that. So he, the innovative jugad implements, if done like this, are spreading on their own. So innovations developed by farmers are the, like spreading also are required, but they need to be tested and uh, like scientifically proven to uh, and commercialized. uh as equipments by companies so there is a lot of work to be done that way uh similarly uh, karnal deswal he is in bulland share he is known as famously known as carrot king gajar ka farm in, uh, is very famous uh, when you go from greater noida towards up so uh, he has construct uh, he is originally an army man but he Uh, ventured into this after his retirement and constructed storage you know uh, structures and is uh, the wholesale supplier only supplier of english variety of carrot that is orange carrot nationwide he has refrigerated trucks on uh, mobile vans to uh, transport that and immediately after uh, harvesting the uh, Uh, carrots uh, produce is cleaned and uh, store, stored in gunny bags in store like uh, huge structures old structures and then they are like as per the uh, demand they are sold uh, nationwide so he says that i don't have to go to any mandi or anywhere to sell my produce people come to me i am the uh, one who is fixing up the price so he has developed an innovative production and marketing methodology where farmers are not going uh, you know from market to market or mandi to mandi to sell he is the one who is so so this, the, uh, these are successful cases if we see, uh, like these are the details but i will not go through them i'll come uh, to the conclusion like three cases or four cases i have presented here but in all we did uh, several cases across 17 states of india and we found that agri preneurship process catalyst if we can list out this individual motivation aspirations are there like it depends totally on individuals their internal strength entrepreneurial competences but also facilitative socio economic factors play a great role and almost all the entrepreneurs like uh, kanchan kabra uh, the lady in black hair she is a wholesaler of spices and she is uh, she has mobilized people in tamil nadu and hyderabad and uh, telangana for spices production and she is an exporter in and based in ahmedabad 
So his uh, Kanchan Kabra, then you see uh, Professor uh, Mr. Jayesh Patel from uh, who's a papa, papaya grower in Ahmedabad, tissue culture based papaya grower. Uh, then we have uh, value, Veera Reddy from uh, Hyderabad, he, Veera of Veera Seeds. He is uh, like savior of he's a BSc AG student. He was uh, completed his BSc AG and then established Veera Seeds. Uh, Vira Reddy seeds and those uh, like seed production of all the traditional Indian pulses and uh, sesame seeds and all those. So he and farmer educator also he is giving uh, advice to many farmers. So he's come emerged as an innovative farmer in the same bleak scenario which other farmers say that it's not possible to grow uh, in this situation. So what is making successful certain people is the combination of all these catalysts, like uh, their own internal strengths, aspirations, their motivation, their competencies, but also the socio-economic factors which are facilitative, like KCC and other government schemes, facilitative skills uh, schemes. And then one thing which was common to all of them was their ability to manage the hindrances. Uh, either they were dodging them or they were solving the, those problems which were coming. Because uh, whatever uh, path you chart, it is inevitable that you will be facing certain problems. So either you have that problem solving attitude, or you can dodge those problems well and good if you can like avoid them at all. So th these were the major uh, things. And if we can list down best practices of these successful farmer entrepreneurs, so we have found that diversification emerged as the major uh, best practice in the sense that they were not putting all their eggs into one basket. They were diversified. So one commodity, if not uh, uh, if there is a glut in the market, then they were earning or uh, having their remuneration from other commodities. So diversification and then recognition of opportunities in, at the field level, their own innovativeness, and market oriented, growing, uh, producing market oriented crops. Besides that, people, they were like uh, going to SAUs or ICR institutes or KVKs to get the expert uh, updation on their knowledge. Then, latest technology usage, all these were the best practices. Apart from, like, we can't negate that they were also aware of wastage control. So, the farmers who were successful were plugging in the leakage holes also. So they were aware that if they are concerned about the leakages on the path process, they will be operationally uh, landing up with the uh, huge returns or huge profits in the later on. So it is the profit which is leaking when there is a wastage around the way. So these are the best practices which came out of our research. And uh, with these kind of things, we proposed a process model of farm entrepreneurship where we found that opportunity recognition, drive for excellence, quality concern, risk-taking behavior, innovativeness, and their own business savviness or orientation was uh, constituting entrepreneurial competencies of the farmers. And in, uh, uh, if we consider the socio-economic uh, cultural uh, sphere, entrepreneurial climate constituting of available technological guidance, available credits, venture funds, government schemes, the effective networking, and the infrastructural ease uh, because of the you know transport or processing centers or availability of market avenues. Uh, these were in time uh, dynamic interplay, entrepreneurial factors constituting entrepreneurial climate, and uh, factors of entrepreneurial competencies were in dynamic interplay to result in establishment, survival, growth, higher profits, or diversification of farm enterprises, which we take as the uh, parameters of success of farmer entrepreneurs. So this is the uh, like result of the farm entrepreneurship model. And this has been recently, like last year, it was uh, uh, accepted by ICR also as a certified technology in extension education. So I feel pride to, you know, say that this has been accepted as a model in the ICR era and in the ICR arena, and it will be like translating to 
various KBKs now. So this is the combination because this has come from the research, like research cases, case studies of the, those achiever farmers. And as for the, like we have already uh, talked about this, facilitative factors of uh, this agripreneurship process, like since all were like in farming background, so 100%, so we can negate that last, you know, bar, but utilizing available opportunities, market demand, proximity to markets, interaction with experts, grouping of for raw material like inputs, they were grouping and getting it. Then low cost machinery, they, like they were able to design low cost machinery. There was a farmer in uh, a seed producer in Devas in MP, whom we interviewed. He was uh, like seed producer of wheat and uh, uh, soya bean. So uh, there is a Mahindra implement which comes with three furrow making, you know, attachment to the tractor. What he do, did was that he extended it, that bar to six one. So in a, in a one go, he can like uh, put up uh, six furrows in the field. So that uh, like lessened his cost of, and time. Uh, how he did it was the local carpenter or local mason was you know, like a builder was used to extend that bar to the six one. There were three for like for for making you know sharp edges. So he made it to the six the two this side and to one this side he added and that one go so that saved time that was innovativeness only. So the low cost machinery certain people have developed for and there was a, another uh, low cost machinery for uh, you know. Uh, Harvesting soya bean, uh, which we thought it was total jugad machinery. It was not uh, like commercially available, but farmer has devised it. So we can uh, like there is a need to these kind of small implements to be commercialized and taken up by industry to uh, for farmers benefit. We implemented uh, the learnings from these case studies uh, to develop another convergence model in uh, our project areas that we said that if they, they, these people can do, so if we also organize certain training programs and give them interventions, uh, skill interventions and also technical updation, so we can also develop agripreneur. So we trained 165 farmers or farm women and among from them, 50 have launched their agri enterprises, which are tiny, but yet they are growing. So they are value addition, they are processing, they are seed production. So uh, in uh, why I'm saying that this is a convergence, but there are at the grassroots level, there are many agencies which are working in uh, the same, you know, for with the same aim. So we utilized Root City, which is a premier institute for training entrepreneurs. Bharti Walmart for marketing the produce of farmers, then agriculture, uh, agribusiness systems international this is another way marketing agency which is uh, operating in Faridabad and Hapur regions of uh, uh, nearby Delhi. Then we uh, also combined our uh, program with uh, Lakshmi Jan Kalyan Seva uh, Sansan, which is an NGO working in the uh, grassroots NGO which are working in that area project villages and also we elicited support from NABARD and we also engaged already established entrepreneurs or successful uh, farm achievers. We engaged them as trainers or we engaged them as teachers or experts for certain delivery training. So learning from their one of them this is the process. If I say that uh, they can do it. Uh, one can do, uh, do like uh, uh, by crop planning uh, uh, emerge as a profit gainer for, from these farm only. But if Arvin Beniwal says it has the credibility, it has more credibility and uh, the training, uh, the learning uh, exchange is more fruitful. So coming from horses mouth is more, uh, you know, necessary that way. So we uh, engaged, uh, we uh, capitalized on the, like working on the synergistic approach in this model. We employed all the eight agencies to develop agricultural entrepreneurs for our training program and uh, like uh, activities in that area. And uh, 50 is a good number, but yes, uh, 
definitely 165 50 out of 165 is a less number also we will consider but every entrepreneurship process is very difficult uh, to go ahead and mostly motivational level goes uh, down after some time uh, initially you can motivate they will launch but then survival maintenance every time uh, motivation and mentorship and holding is essential these are some of the glimpses of seed production uh, enterprises which we we developed and we also initiated the buyback so we also uh, motivated farmers to na become seed produ producers and especially in vegetable area vegetable seeds are mostly like imported so they are very uh, like for 200 grams or 500 grams they are farmers are spending 10000 to 15000 per packet and which is not sufficient and indian varieties like we have uh, i for example i are having definitely better varieties or even like other university state agriculture university but our radius is uh, not uh, you know increasing people are coming for seeds to us but then uh, our seeds are only for research purposes so they are not mass produced so if we engage farmers to uh, become seed producers it will be the good seed call uh, will be available to all farmers so with this intention we took up this uh, project of developing agricultural entrepreneurs in vegetable seed production uh, with a, a nabard grant and uh, we also initiated buyback linkages with the uh, national seed corporation so uh, the after the testing and uh, like nsc was also buying back and ira was buying back those who so were well farmer producers seed producers so <laughs> this was uh, this program this project was also very much appreciated by nabard and they wanted to in, like uh, uh, take it up as a huge program in other locations so we uh, uh, advise them to go with the different universities because that way they will be able to carry uh, like cover more area so if we talk about conclude this developing agripreneurship it's a difficult task and like but then if we uh, normally uh, go by it normally whatever is happening as a part of kvk trainings or other training programs on entrepreneurship the title will be entrepreneurship training program but the missing elements will be this uh, psychological uh, readiness of individuals will be calling some people and some uh, uh, participants will come for the certificate but their own intention and own motivation will not be uh, uh, totally with the uh, like uh, they might not be convinced for going ahead with the agripreneurship i mean to say that after the program they will be just leaving with the certificate not much of the thing so for designing a different uh, the fm uh, a good program for developing agripreneurship we need to focus more on this sequential process of this like the triggering the psychological mainspring like intent and motive of people making them psychologically ready to take up the enterprise because enterprise uh, entrepreneurial path is not very easy so making them resilient enough or psychologically ready to want that uh, that is one thing so one aspect then uh, like training them giving them the entrepreneurial competences like opportunity recognition market readiness risk taking behavior all these soft skills entrepreneurial competence apart from technical expertise most of our entrepreneurship training program are only uh, uh, restricted to technical uh, giving them the technical skills for example there will be the title will be entrepreneurship development uh, entrepreneurship training program for mushrooms so mushroom production will be explained uh, first session will be theoretical lecture of how many types of mushrooms are there uh, then uh, like what is the production technology what are the basic material raw material where to get the spawn from uh, how to construct this uh, structure with bamboo or uh, you can uh, take another you know pouch kind of thing and then uh, this will be the yield uh, like what kind of uh, uh, infectious diseases can occur and then this will be the yield like production uh, per uh, season or per uh, you know this uh, ton like itne uh, tons per uh, the uh, square meter area so of the enterprise and then the program ends 
where is the total package entrepreneurial technical and formation package entrepreneurship motivation is lacking there then after after producing this much yield uh, the pc ratio will be given to 2 is to 1 or 1 is to like whatever it is and then that uh, ends but where to market it what are the agencies which are like into this where when you need uh, like uh, an efficient uh, person to manage the diseases or efficient people to uh, construct the shed, sheds where are those available nothing of this sort of information is available many people many uh, uh, post retirement uh, this army men come to us and they say ki i have this much land and i have this much of investment to make 1 lakh hai 5 lakh 5 lakh hai 10 lakh hai aap batao hum kya kare ab straight away we don't have anything ready to give it to them hum kehte hain like you can do the vegetable production which you can do the seed production but we don't have ready made packages on in the form of entrepreneurial technical information packages so at iara we try to develop this entrepreneurial technical information packages which also in include the technical or production part but marketing part and like uh, uh, the pre uh, motivational aspects also ki how what to train the individual for that is also thing so oh, we did it as a testing thing and for six technologies we did and it is available on our iri website in the publication it is a free of cost it's bilingual in for six technologies then uh, launching agripreneurship ventures removing obstacles establishing cli- appropriate climate some of these steps are to be taken uh, with the agencies with the government and private agencies together and linking with market and in- inculcating managerial skills are also important so from the extension education perspective if we see we need to focus more on the hand holding apprenticeship mentorship that is facilitation for empowerment the or human resource development rather than the upper two where we were earlier working for the transfer of technology or advisory role so human resource development the kind of competencies which we require uh, first we need to identify and then uh, identify the tools to uh, you know inculcate those in the income uh, trainees and then facilitation for empowerment at the grassroots level so i end my session over here with this message thank you so much for hearing me madam really it was a very thought provoking and very informative lecture and we got lot of uh, information out of your uh, very interesting lecture so before i offer my remarks i request our uh, chairman of the session to offer his remarks followed by that i invite dr nirmala devi to present proposed vote of thanks i as a mark of uh, respect to our today's speaker madam i announce a competition for the new msc students 15 students all the new freshers msc freshers can prepare a success story and hand over to the head of the department to play in your own way and a small video showing your skills in interviewing the successful uh, farmer there will be three prizes 5000 3000 2000 all the three prizes will be selected by the head and the faculty members and uh, after four or five months time i will be listening to you the successful success stories with this we will heartily thank and uh, uh, it is uh, stemming from my own observation and uh, let us meet sometime whether here or in delhi Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, well, good. Good noon to all. I think it is not at all. It is afternoon.
and it is my privilege to say a word of thanks in during this prestigious occasion. And I first wish to thank our uh, Dean SPGS for creating such an opportunity by having guest lectures throughout all the PhD viva, which will be an exposure for all the students of all other faculty, all other disciplines also. I would like to thank our professor and head, Dr. Kathya Insar, for making the session fine and guiding us to do in every step of all these activities for the successful conduct of the program. And it is my great pleasure to submit our profound thanks to Dr. Reshmi Singh, who have given us a wide opening session on entrepreneurship development. Thank you, ma'am. And the topic is highly a need of the hour to make our graduates as an agripreneur, especially agripreneur is much more needed. That should be the character should be imbibed in the um, student's heart that only they will go for uh, agripreneur search or entrepreneur search. Thank you, ma'am. And I wish to thank the chairman of the program, Dr. Vijay Raghavan sir, who stamped this uh, session with his high creativity of honoring all the first PG and PhD students. I think the students have never ever forgiven this. Thank you, thank you so much. And I thank all the participants and all the persons who are behind this session and for the successful conduct of the session. Thank you so much. Thank you.